Okay, welcome back everyone. And let's just continue with our theme type tutorials. And in this video, I want to override a renderer. So in our last video, we did override a template, which was this my overview block. And by kind of putting in this particular template in this file structure, we're able to basically change the HTML here and change the way that it's output in our Moodle course. And you can remember we made this theme with the green buttons and the green background, a beautiful new theme. That was in these uh, CSS files that we've done that. So instead of overriding this moustache template, we can also override a renderer. So a renderer basically calculates and displays content onto the page. Now that's kind of what a moustache template does as well, except it doesn't do that calculation part. All of the these kind of variables like this are calculated over in PHP and then fed into the template, which does very little logic, except a little bit of kind of if statement type uh, type functions like this. But in general, it just kind of displays. A renderer can do a fair bit more. So let's just have a look at, for example, a test course. So I, we, we should have set one up and you don't even need to be using my, our theme that we created. It can be any theme. But one kind of basic renderer is the one that displays the course content here on a basic course page. So you can see what we have here is, and if you look at the URL down the bottom, we just have a couple of different modules, basically. Page, resource, these are different course modules. And they are rendered and then displayed onto the page one at a time. So let's find the renderer for that. Being course. And where is it? Renderer. And basically what we have here, if we have a look, it's a class. Renderer is a class, a class that basically contains all the the logic and uh, HTML structure to display stuff in Moodle. So all of these functions in here are pretty much going to, as you can see in this one, they're just going to return some HTML content. It's going to be a string with formatted properly as HTML, with HTML tags and all that. So if we scroll down in this course renderer, we'll eventually find one that I think will be useful, which was probably this one. Display one course module in a course section. Well, that is what we're doing here. And if we want to prove that, let's just do a few little hacks here in Core Moodle. So of course, I want to be able to change this code, all this code here, without actually having to edit it right here in Core Moodle. I want to override this renderer and this particular renderer function in our theme. So let's start with, say, adding some basic HTML to the end of this output. And we can kind of see how it works. So let's say, let's do a strong testing, testing one, two, three. Okay. So that's going to add some HTML to each of our CMs. Let's refresh the page. All right. Well, that makes sense. Uh, every CM kind of gets rendered one at a time. And then we've added our this output HTML to the end of that. Now, if you notice, we're kind of putting the testing output on a different line. And I think that's just to do with the HTML structure here. So it kind of is inserted after these other divs are closed. And I'm kind of wanting it to go right next to it or on the same row. And you can see how in Moodle, this is how we do it. We use this HTML writer class and that outputs 
tags and all other kind of HTML elements like divs and ends them as well. So we kind of output a div, calculate some stuff, add the content and put the end div. So what all I'm going to do is just put this output here instead and see what happens. Refresh, I'll close this. Well, I think that looks better. So it's on the same row at least. I'm just kind of looking at those lines. It's on the same row. And I mean, the problem is that it's, well, it's probably just this styling here. If we wanted to actually make it go close, maybe we can do that later in the tube. So if we, if we change in our theme for this number to be something more like 10, that might look better. Because what I really want to do actually is next to each course module, show when that course module was created. That's going to be the goal of this shoot. So what we want to do is basically here in the output, show, well, grab that, that data, put it in here, and add it to our render. Okay, so this is looking pretty good because we are able to output something next to each course module. And what I want to actually output is the date that the course module was added. So what we got to do is change this instead of this genetic testing, we've got to put the date for each course module. And we have all the module data here in this object called mod. And even in the course modules uh, database table, we can see all the different data that is contained inside a course module. And one of the uh, you know pieces of data is the date added, which is an integer, which is a Unix timestamp. So what we can do is something like date equals our course module added. That's pretty easy. And we can put that into our string by concatenating it. So we'll do something like this, date, this. Save that. Let's refresh our page. Looks good. So we have the actual Unix timestamp there. Now I want to change the format to something like human readable that we can actually see what it is. And we do that with another internal Moodle function. Uh, and yeah, you can see here date format string. So this function basically takes a Unix timestamp and a format and returns that in human readable format. And this is in the Moodle lib file, which has a whole bunch of these kind of date functions and a whole bunch of other functions as well. So let's go and put that here. And what we need is two parameters at least, which is the date, which we have, and a format. And the format is kind of of this format. Uh, format, something like that, where you put your uh, percentage, you know, percentage and uh, year, month. Uh, let's see how we go with that. Yeah, I mean, that looks better. So we can leave it at that for now. And the next thing I want to do is just put this column a bit closer to our actual course modules by reducing this width. So it's going to be a CSS change. And let's look at the styles here. Um, if we look for uh, what is causing this width, I think it's here. Yeah, so this min width is 40%, which is maybe a bit too big for us. So let's go and change that in the theme. So we want to copy this CSS selector, and it wouldn't be enough to just do activity instance here by itself. We kind of need that whole CSS path that increases the priority and will allow us to override the boost CSS style. So we get that whole one and let's go and put that in our CSS file. Yeah, like here. Min width, right? 10%. And then of course, we want to purge the caches after we do something like that and refresh the page.
Okay, and that's looking a lot better because that's closer now. So maybe all I'll do as well is say just some more text there. We can say something like uh, added on date like that. Something like that. Looks looks pretty good. So this is what I want to see. But the problem here is that we have done the code change in the core Moodle function, which is a bit wrong. We want to override the core course renderer in our theme. So the, the CSS change we've done is good because that's in the theme, but the renderer change is in core Moodle where we want to override this renderer. And what that's going to basically involve is overriding this whole function here, this particular course section CM function. So to do that, how about let's Google it. That's always a good thing to start with. And Moodle has a pretty good uh, docs for this, so definitely, obviously, read it and follow along with this as well. Um, now, in this docs, in this uh, page, it actually makes you create a whole theme. You know, we've already got a theme that we worked through and made, and you don't have to use this theme. You can use any theme and override this renderer as well. But if you don't have a theme, then go ahead and you can just clone like this repo if you want. And here it explains a bit more about HTML Writer, which is good to know because it outputs these tags in a special way. You know, what we did here, uh, where is it? If we go down, you know, we, I put tags in like this, which is also kind of wrong. You want to be putting tags in using HTML Writer. And we'll change that once we put it into uh, our overridden renderer class as well. So this is how we have to do it. Create a file render as PHP within the root of the themes directory. So let's go ahead and do that. It's easy. New file. Renderers. And we want to have the class be called the correct thing. And this is obviously very important. It needs to be right. Otherwise, it won't work at all. And you'll be stuck wondering, oh, why, you know, why doesn't my over in function take effect, you've probably missed something here. So, of course, this has to be our theme name. And we're actually going to override another renderer, the core course renderer. So if I actually, uh, let's do this, get the structure up. Yeah, so th in this file, you know, where it's not the core renderer, it's the course renderer. So just wanted to show you that. So it's a different class. Core course renderer. Core course renderer. Cool. And we also should include the file in here. So we can't really extend this renderer without knowing uh, what this original class is and where it comes from. So, and in fact, we also need to uh, make sure this is an internal page. So let's just go. What we need is this. We need to say define Moodle internal. That means we will have our config and our uh, other config set up. Like it'll have passed through the config.php file. So we want to require once uh, config root. So this basically means uh, the root of our whole site. And um, it's the course render.php. So with those two, this should start to work. And let's just continue here. What's the next step? Um, yeah, well, I mean, we've got the right name now. And now we can put our method in it looks like so let's do that we want to copy in this whole function let's do that this is how you do it so we've copied in the whole function because I don't really want to change all the basic stuff that this function is doing you looked I don't even understand I haven't looked into all this 
these and followed all these rabbit holes down I just want to add something on the end so that's why it's fine to uh, basically copy that function in so now that we've got that now that we've got our function let's remove any changes from the core function because we don't want to actually have any changes here okay and now that files back to normal so now let's go back to our function and uh, well if we've got all the pieces in place it should be using a new function now so when it ever this function gets called course section CM it'll first check our overridden class if we have implemented it and if not then it will fall back to core Moodle's version we also just FYI it is important to have uh, in your theme config you need this special theme config that'll let your theme actually override other renderers so without that it won't work either uh, but anyway let's just give it a whirl so if we refresh that is still displaying so that should be working let's just make sure so it's not caching or something else uh, added on date test I don't know just put something extra in there refresh again oh yeah so it is using our overridden renderer method uh, let's just remove that test again so you can see how easy it is you know if, as long as you have all the naming uh, correct that should work uh, I just want to also change this because this is not great we should really be using the HTML writer to do the same thing with these strong tags so the way we would do that here and let's just get rid of this as well uh, we basically want to use HTML writer so let's do this um, it'd be something like output and then just concatenate some strings to the end of it the strings though are written with HTML writer we want to start a strong tag and then we want to end a strong tag so that's well that's the, the equivalent of these two tags here and in between them of course I want to put the date right so let's do that date and before them I want to put this as well let's put that there that way I can get rid of all this and in fact let's put that there so this might look a little bit more complicated but it should be doing the same thing let's just quickly have a look yeah so that that's the same uh, the same output and yeah it's just a more moodly way of doing things okay so I mean that's pretty much it for this video hope you liked it we just very simply followed the the docs here and I'll put a link in the description for this uh, it'd be good to follow their tutorial here as well and this is the kind of output and the kind of thing you might want to do with overriding the renderer um, before we end I might just do a commit and put this in the the uh, theme so we all can see what we've done so you can follow along there with the code as well and also guys I made a patreon and uh, already have some people supporting me which is awesome so that's there as well and the videos will stay free but if you want to support me there I would greatly appreciate that as well. So thank you, and I'll be releasing a lot more videos, so stay tuned.